Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and I am joined once again today by Arix. Hey, how's it going? Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. And today we are going to be talking, we're going to be doing a little soapbox, if you like, about the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild DLC announcement that happened just, well, very recently at the time of recording. Yes, yeah, you, you were super quick on it. I looked at Twitter and suddenly it was like, you had a video saying it. I was like, wow, okay, blimey, <laughs> hot off the press, hot off the press. I, I, just, I just happened to see the tweet as it went out and I was like, oh, what, you know, just something about Breath of the Wild. The tweet itself was fairly vague. Watched the video and suddenly saw the big the big words announcing new content and I was like, oh my giddy ass!" So I, yeah. I got it up Ooh. as soon as possible, yeah. But anyway, so, um... Alex, I beg your you've, pardon? <laughs> <laughs> you've, um, you've, you've seen all the details. I'll tell you what, we'll run through the details very briefly for those yeah. that don't know what it is. So, um, the idea is that there are two DLC packs. The first one, which is coming out in the summer, has a new Cave of Trials challenge, a new hard mode with no additional information about that, and an additional map feature. Again, no specific details. And then in the second DLC pack, which is coming in winter, there will be a new original story, as well as a new dungeon and additional challenges. And when you buy the expansion pass, you get a little bonus, which will be available at launch, which is three new treasure chests on the Grand Plateau, containing useful items, I've put that in inverted commas because we have no idea what <laughs> they are, as well as a brand new item of clothing for Link, which is a shirt with the Switch logo. So you can run around wearing that if you like. And that it's actually going to be identical between the Wii U and the Switch version. This, this is available for both versions, which means you can run around in the Wii U version wearing a Switch t-shirt. So if you've only got that copy, you can have a little tear <laughs> roll down your face. Is that the, the sly way to say, hey, you should buy a Nintendo Switch while wearing your Nintendo Switch t-shirt <laughs> playing on Wii U? <laughs> Basically, yeah. And uh, the interesting thing is, um, they were fairly quiet about this, but mm, although yeah. there are two DLC packs, you cannot buy them individually. So you have to buy the expansion pass, yeah. You have to buy the expansion pass, which I'm calling a season pass, because that's what everyone else calls it. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, so um, I don't know whether they call it an expansion pass bonus when it's mandatory, as it were. But you know that you know that is what you get. So uh, it may be that later down the line you can buy the individual packs separately. We don't know, but right now all mm. we know is that the only way to get it is to pay seventeen pound ninety nine or nineteen ninety nine if you're paying in dollars, and you get all that good stuff. Exciting stuff. It is exciting stuff. So uh, talking about the uh, the first DLC pack, um, so the new Cave of Trials challenge, the new hard mode, and the additional map feature. We don't know too much about it, but what what were your feelings about it? So I mean, all in all, I'm, I I appreciate you know there's there's obviously whenever it comes to DLC and, and season passes and stuff, especially for a game like this, it's quite a new thing. It's quite a sort of new venture for for Nintendo anyway. So I appreciate these mixed responses, but I I personally am super happy about this. I mean, like as a huge Zelda fan, a chance to get more Zelda is just always an easy win for me. I can see, I mean, you know, some of the some of the comments that I've seen from people, um, things like, our Cave of Trials was in the previous sort of Zelda game, why am I now having to buy it, or things like that. But I think one of the take-home points for me, one of the most important things to factor in, this is the biggest Zelda game we have ever had. Like, it's mm. the biggest open world Nintendo has ever produced. So already we're getting a considerably larger Zelda than we've ever had before. Plus we can now get more stuff onto it. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy with that. And I think it's also a good move. I mean, like, you look at, other companies, anyone like that produces a big open world tends to do this. You know, you look at Fallout DLC or Skyrim or GTA, anything that's got like a big open world map. You know, you don't create this world and say, here you go, job done. You know, we're finished with the world. Thanks very much. You know, have have fun or something like that. It's like, you know, we built this world. Let's add more to it because I, you know, I'd be very willing to willing to bet that once we start playing the game and exploring, there's going to be you know a whole lot of stuff to do, but there'll also be spaces that they could probably put more stuff in. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm all for it. Yeah, likewise. I mean, I can, I, as you say, I, I, likewise, I can understand why people may be feeling a little bit jaded about it, because um, I think there has been a bit of a, a bit of a sort of a bad press around DLC um, after, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure how many companies do it now, but the sort of the day one DLC and DLC on disc and things like that, that I do mm. have a bit of a problem with, but this is entirely new content. It's been developed outside of the original game that's already gone gold and stuff like that. And so if they want to release some new content, then I say go for it. You know, it's, it's yeah, more exactly. Zelda at the end of the day. If you don't want it, don't buy it. Don't expect something <laughs> for free. Yeah, I mean, one, I think one of the important things as well is to, is to factor in, if this season pass never existed and Zelda released as it was, let's say, you know, it came out without Cave of Trials, without hard mode, 
without this unknown additional map feature, people would still be super happy because they'd be like, well, hold on a minute, this is still an infinitely bigger Zelda than I've ever played. It's probably, you know, I obviously having not played it yet, I don't know how long it's going to last, but I would be willing to bet, given the, the scale of the map, it's probably going to be the longest Zelda you're ever going to play. So people, you know, if the season pass never existed, people would have finished the game and be like, yeah, that's a solid game, really enjoyed it, had fun. Yeah, but exactly. But it's just because, of course... You yeah, but of course, you know, when this comes out, this always happens. When they announce DLC before a game comes out, people are like, well, hold on a minute, has that been taken out of the game? Like, you know, I mean, there's, there's nobody has any insight into development. Um, and while a lot of people were like, you know, they're clearly, they've clearly stripped this out and they're trying to sell it to us. Like, I don't think that's the case. You've still got a fully fledged Zelda game that you can experience. You don't have to buy the season pass at all. There is, there is nothing in here that will detract from the core Zelda experience if you don't buy it. Hmm. But it's just extra stuff. And, and I mean, also, the, you know, there's a couple of things as well. Bear in mind, we don't have many details just yet. So, one of the things, for example, New Heart Boot. Now I know like a few different, you know, a few of the past Zelda games have had these, you know, these hard, these hard or these hero modes you can do afterwards. But it does state a new hard mode, so we don't know at this stage whether Breath of the Wild may already have a hard mode upon completion. This could be like, what if, what if, for example, this was Nightmare Mode? What if you know you complete Breath of the Wild without Season Pass, you can then play again in Hero Mode, and you can then get a DLC and get like Nightmare Mode, where it's something like I don't know, you get hit once and you die. Imagine that. <laughs> Yeah, something along those lines. I, I imagine it's going to be something... E even then, I, I think that's maybe potentially doing it a bit of a disservice. I mean, again, we don't know any details at the moment, but I would be very surprised if they just, you know, sort of had a hard mode where you just take more damage and it literally is just a value modifier because that is... Yeah, hopefully it's more than that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it could be something, you know, they could change, you know, what enemies are spawning where, the number of camps, the placement of camps, the placement of different dungeons, you know, it could, it could be something, you know, even going as far as something like a Master Quest for Ocarina of Time where they completely... It was, it was, it was like a remix and whilst it isn't, you know, going to take anywhere near as much time as developing a brand new Breath of the Wild type game obviously it's still something that will take a lot of time and effort on the developers part and it's something that would be worth playing and it's coming with a load of cave of trials i mean i can yeah. i can picture you know any you know sort of any big game like fallout and things like that fallout 4 for example i recently bought the dlc on there because i ran out of fallout 4 to do and it's you know I, I, sp I spent 40 quid on the season pass because I wanted to buy two things, but I mean, Far Harbor was um, was about twenty five quid in and of itself, and I felt that that was worth it because it was about twenty five quid's worth of content. And I think yeah. it comes down to, and with this, you're getting the Cave of Trials, you're getting the hard mode, you're getting the additional map feature, which sounds super fun. Um, no, honestly, I have no idea what that thing's going to be. So that could be that could be a bit of a waste of time. We just don't know. And I think far Unless too the many people. Map feature. Sorry, go on. No, I, I was just going to say, unless, you know, I think far too many people are jumping the gun, assuming that it's going to be a piddly, unnecessary little bit of DLC, and it's not going to be worth the money. It's as worth as, as much as you think it is. If you don't think it's worth £17.99 for those two packs, you don't buy it. It's as simple as that, you know. Yeah. Don't expect everything to be handed to you on a platter. And also, I mean, not, you know, not forgetting, you don't, you don't have to buy it. Like, for example, you know, you can buy it at launch, so you get the expansion pass stuff and then wait for the DLC. Or if you want to, you know, I mean, which is understandable for some people, you know, you might not necessarily want to spend that money initially. Wait till the DLC comes out, find out what it actually is, and then that can inform your inform your purchase. You know, hopefully we'll get some more more information. I mean, the, the, the additional map feature, again, it could be something basic, like, you know, putting down waypoint, like putting down, like, fancy waypoints. Or it could be something like a different style of map. I mean, imagine if there was, like, the shadow, kind of the dark realm or the shadow realm, or sort of an inverse realm of, like, the existing game world. Like, what if that? What if it was crazy and massive like that? Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, we don't know. I don't. I personally, I think that might I be think that be might that. be being a little bit too ambitious with that. But um, yeah, we, you know, it's coming down to an additional map feature. I imagine if it was something really as without wishing to put too fine a point on it, dull as, you know, just a fancy way of doing waypoints or a, a new fun <laughs> way of doing waypoints. I don't think they'd bother to mention it, to be honest. Or if they no, would, actually. I think they'd have a little bit more detail about it. But who knows, maybe it could be something really dull and they just wanted a third point, so they thought we'll slap something quick in. Who knows? You, you just don't know. And I think people are no. jumping to conclusions far too quickly. And I, I genuinely believe that DLC like this, reasonably priced as it appears to be, can only be a good thing for Zelda. And who knows, maybe we'll yeah. get even more DLC in the future, which frankly excites me to the point that I think I might put a little bit of Wii out in my pants. <laughs> 
But no, I mean, it's, it's true. And I, th I think also, like, it's a, it's a good move as well for, like, Nintendo. I mean, we said at the beginning of the video that, like, I mean, I appreciate, again, there are very, there are, there are very, there's a very clear divide when it comes to talking about DLC anyway, right? And I, I can completely understand that. But it is also a way, you know, it's, it's kind of, it is the future of gaming. People, people will produce a game that is, you know, like, you get your experience, you finish it, but then you can get more of that experience later. And it's something that Nintendo are, you know, still relatively new to in the grand scheme of things. So this is kind of a sign of the times, you know, them, them moving into this, this format, this sort of model, so to speak, is them... Like, you know, wising up to things and trying to sort of, you know, adopt the more... Trying to, try to sort of, like, fall in line with some of the other people. Because, I mean, people have always for a long time said, we wish Nintendo did some of the stuff that, like, Sony did or, or, like, Microsoft did. And, like, Nintendo have always been very much their own people. They do their... They do what they think is right. But this is definitely them kind of adopting a much more kind of modern culture, if you see what I mean. Yeah, so it's, it's I good agree. For, it's good for the future. Yeah, and, you know... Uh... This game, you know, sort of, this game has been in development for how long? In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna double check it now because um, we can be fairly certain that because the 3D and the 2D Zelda teams are entirely separate, that the the third, uh, the 3D party have been working on. You know, I'm gonna do that whole line again. <laughs> no I'm trying to hold back a cough. Intermission. Intermission. Yeah. But I can imagine that this game has been in development for, well, I mean, how long is, I mean, Skyward Sword came out in 2011, so that's six years. That long? Yeah, wow. it's been about six years, and we can be fairly certain that it, it's the same team that's been working on Skyward Sword, because the 3D and 2D Zelda teams are entirely separate, so, I mean, yes. what else would they be working on? I mean, the, the 3DS games, you know, the Majora's Mask 3D and Ocarina of Time 3D, they were done by a different company, so this mm. has been in the works for six years. Six years of work, yes. and you're going to be able to pick up the game for about 40 or 50 pounds, you know. 50 or 60 dollars just you know for a ballpark figure it depends you know on all sorts of different factors i don't know the exact prices but and you're just gonna be able to pick up this game this colossal game for that small amount of price which is exactly what you would have paid for skyward sword or ocarina of time which were developed you know i'm sure it took a very long time to develop but nowhere near on the scope of breath of the wild yeah. and i think it's perfectly fair to want to try and expand upon that you know, with DLC and things like that, in order to try and make a bit more money out of it. Because at the end of the day, they are a business. And if they're offering us yeah. more Zelda for a fair price, go for it, dude, I say. Exactly, yeah. No, I, I completely, completely agree with that, yeah. More chance more chance to play Zelda, more chance to play the game that I love. And yeah, I mean, especially, you know, especially if this, if this world, as I said at the beginning, like, if it is so huge, uh, I'm going to want to sort of explore it fully anyway. But if, I, if it means I can then revisit it later and do stuff, yeah. That is going to be good. <coughs> Yeah, well, I mean, they're saying it's bigger than Skyrim at the moment. Ooh, oh, at, yes, at, yes. at least in terms of landmass, but this, you know, this isn't an intent official Nintendo word, so we don't know how reliable that is. But the whole idea that it could even come close to the size of Skyrim, which, you know, Skyrim's great, but it is generally fairly barren, and, you know, that is to the strength of the game in many ways. But you and I, we've, we've played Breath of the Wild, we've been on the Grand Plateau, and we already know that it is going to be so, so massive just from that. And there's going to be so much going on. It's so rich yeah. and full and vibrant. And there's all these things to do. The landscape, just as much as the, you know, the enemy placement and things like that, is a part of the game. You know, you're going to be doing the shield surface surfing and all that. So the environment really is going to come into its own. But um, I want to move on to the, uh, the DLC pack two now before we get too in depth with the first one and just talking generally about it, because this is what contains the new original story. Yes which I'm very excited about because I think, you know, we've, we've had side quests and stuff like that in the past with Zelda when it comes, you know, with things like the big Auron sword and all the, yeah. you know, even like uh, if you play Majora's Mask, the Anju and Cafe quest for the, uh, the, oh, yes. the couple's mask, my God, that thing was massive, or at least it felt like it when <laughs> I was eight, um, although I don't think I was eight, but we're not getting into the, we're not getting into the finer details. Um, so the whole idea of having an original side story, maybe, for example, something about Impa or something, and again, I'm just throwing ideas yeah. at the wall, we have no idea what it's gonna be, but something about Impa, or maybe, you know, Link discovers, you know, his parents or something. There's so much mystery surrounding this particular entry when it comes to the narrative, that there's so much more that could be explored. It's all about discovering the past. And apparently- You know, it could be, go on. Yeah, apparently it could, you know, you can even get to the end boss 
straight away if you wish. And apparently you're not going to be able to actually defeat it, but you can yeah. just sort of go to the end boss as, you know, as quickly as you want. So you can discover Ooh. as little or as much about Link's past and what's actually happened to Hyrule and all that good stuff as you want. So there's nothing to say that there can be even more to discover there. Yeah, that's true, that's true. I was thinking as well, something yeah, something that we kind of, well, I sp spoke about like a long, long time ago before, you know, there was even the season pass stuff, but one of the things that, one of these sort of running themes, if you notice all the trailers, is obviously, you know, obviously blue is a very, like, prominent uh, prominent colour, but, you know, we've seen a few noteworthy characters that are wearing blue um, items. You've got that, the bird dude, you've got the Goron guy, and you've, of course, you know, Zelda wears that as well. What if, what if, right, what if, crazy moment here, what if this new original story is once you've completed Breath of the Wild and you've done, like, Link's journey, you actually play as someone else. Like, imagine playing as, I mean, maybe playing as Zelda, or playing as the Goron, or playing as, like, like any of those guys that wear blue, because they're clearly going to be noteworthy characters. You're then almost, like, filling in gaps of, like, while Link was doing this, what were these guys doing? That could be crazy. That would be really cool, or even something like a prequel or something, you know, a flashback, yes. you know? And I think to be able to play as Zelda finally in a mainline Zelda game, because, you know, being the titular character, I think that that is a little bit overdue, to be honest. I mean, mm, you, know, I, yeah. you know, playing as Link, Link is obviously the main playable character, but to be able to do a little bit, you know, playing as Zelda or something like that, I'd love that, because I think Zelda's yeah. massively underrated. She is an absolute badass, especially in, exactly. you know, Breath of the Wild you've seen in the trailers and stuff like that. Very briefly, it's not obvious that it's happening, but Link is actually holding off this gigantic enemy, saving Link using her magic powers. She is yeah. fantastic, and even in Ocarina of Time, imagine being able to run around and play as Sheik, that would have been fantastic. Ooh, that would have been so good. So yeah. good. Exactly, yeah. And I mean, even, you know, there, there was that part at the end of one of those trailers where she walks out holding the slate and, you know, there was like, before they revealed her face properly, people were like, you know, what does this mean? Does it mean you're going to play it? So, yeah, I mean, or, you know, that could even transpire in the story anyway. It'd be hilarious if they did like a, just a crazy swap. It was like, hey, it's the whole of Breath of the World again, but you're playing as Zelda and you're going to go and rescue Link. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Ima happen. Imagine if that was the hard <laughs> mode. You were playing as Zelda. Oh, no. That'd be hilarious. And it was just, you know, sort of slightly flipped on its head so that, you know, obviously slightly different narrative, but, well, the same narrative, but from a different perspective. I mean, that, that probably is going too far, to be honest with you. Yeah. And I don't think that would constitute an original story. I do think they're really no. trying to, you know, do a different narrative, you know, sort of as an add-on, you know, much like you'd expect from DLC. So, um, yeah, not, sure. not, not entirely plausible, but, you know, that's a bit that's a bit of a pipe dream, but it's nice to wish and hope, isn't it? Exactly, yeah, for sure. Okay, so, um, yeah, I've, I think I've said pretty much everything I want to say about this. You know, I think it's going to be a fantastic thing. Arix, is there anything you'd like to sum up with to say to the lovely people out there? I mean, I think just kind of kind of what we said already, is, you know, it's, it's only going to be a good thing for the future of the game. It's just more chance to play Zelda. The game itself is going to be incredible, regardless of whether you buy the season pass or not. So, fear not, but yeah, I am hyped. It's so close now. What is it like? Sixteen days or a time of the making of this video anyway. So yeah, sixteen. I, I 17, don't. I don't know. 15. It's 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 so close. I can almost taste it. So good. But yeah, it's gonna. I think it's gonna be great. It's gonna be massive, and I'm really looking forward to playing it. Oh, it's so it's so close now. So close. Yeah. But thank you again, Arix, for coming along and joining me on this lovely little soapbox. And, uh, no worries, thanks for having me. No, you're very welcome. If you want to check out Arix's channel, you can click that card up in the top corner, or you can check out the link in the description. He does all sorts of lovely things, not all Nintendo related, so if you've got a bit of a, a daring taste for the alternative, you can check that out down there. And thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you get some DLC for that subscribe button for a very reasonable sum, or something to that effect. And be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh, what?